Hello. In this video, we want to have a look at, at a new Data Vault Builder version for Google BigQuery. So, what is the Data Vault Builder? The Data Vault Builder solves the issue of companies that have a lot of data. And a lot of data doesn't mean that you have many rows, you could have, but you have many different data sources. So, you have databases, Excel sheets, maybe some CRM system that is in the cloud. You have some external data providers and you need to bring all the data together to get the integrated picture. You need to refresh the data in regular intervals. You need to have reliable data, clean data. You need to know where it's coming from so you can fulfill GDPR requirements and stuff like that. And this is not a new requirement just back in the days when I started in data warehousing. It looked a little bit like that. We had many different tools for data modeling, deployment, creating database table, moving the data. And this didn't got better. With the modern data stack, there's still a lot of different code based tools and many platforms that need to interact somehow. And this is the point that we address with the Data Vault Builder. The Data Vault Builder replaces up to nine different tools. It goes from infrastructure automation through development, through deployment, up to the level of operations. And by that, it makes your data process better, cheaper, less risky, and it gives you a much better, faster time to insight. Still, we are usually working with a database because we are more of an orchestrator, sending commands to different platforms to load the data, store the data, process the data. And this is what we do now with Google BigQuery as well. So the basic idea is that we have a data model, which is business driven, and this brings our IT and business users together. And this is the first time that we achieved that because there are many good tools for IT. There are many good modeling tools for the business, but in many companies, the core, the working together between the two teams is very limited. And back in the days, we already had these approaches. We had different modeling tools that helped us to talk to the business user, but then we printed it out or created a PDF file, handed it over to the developers that went to the back room, created the implementation, figured out that the data doesn't match exactly what the business expect and needed to do changes. But these changes never made it back to the model. The business user needed to wait for weeks or days at least and already didn't receive what they expected and it was not what was documented. So what are we doing here is that we take the business model and we translate it in real time into working code. This means we are going into BigQuery, we're creating data sets, we're creating tables, we're creating views in BigQuery. And this is happening in real time and if somebody changes something in the code, it will be reflected as well in the data model. Our staging layer is coming with the tool so we can connect to many different data sources and use our ETL connectors. but if you already use built-in staging mechanisms, you can use the ELT part and let BigQuery state your data as you maybe use already right now. So the next step is then to connect the stage data with your data model. And we are doing that by asking you for the business key. But if you define a business key, the tool, the Data Vault Builder supports you in validating if this key is unique, if it is, and you decide to create everything, it will create a hub loads, it will create a satellite, satellite loads, it will create patterns for historization, it will create tracking objects to keep track if a business key was deleted in your source system. And it documents everything, it creates data lineage, and you're production ready to go on. The next step is now, step one was loading the data model, step two is staging the data, step three, connecting the stage data with the data model is to create an output. And here we are taking the power of BigQuery by using the performance of the database. And based on your model, you can create different automated views, either outputting data as dimensional model, third normal form, flat tables or data products. On top of it, you can create virtual business rules, which are in fact capturing SQL that we send down to the database, but we are adding like stuff like versioning, and maintainability to it by splitting it up into smaller bits if you like that. And then you can decide to output the data by publishing it 
to the good data or publishing it to the error marts for capturing if there are any data problems. The full process is managed in one tool. We are creating metadata in every step. We are creating as well views for putting metadata to integrate with your data dictionaries, whatever you're using in the company, and everything works out of the box. If still this kind of virtual rules would be too slow, or if you need to keep the results for me for auditability, you can store them back in the tool in the so-called business world and materialize them again. So just to know what happens in the background, because we will not see this in the short live demonstration, is it helps you to set up your infrastructure. We're delivering everything on Docker containers. So you can run it on GCP or on any other hyperscaler. Data profiling is included. The modeling part, it generates code. If you change the code, it's updating the model. It creates documentation and data lineage while you're modeling. It includes the deployment module directly talking as well to a Git server if you like that or you can use your existing Git clients. Testing is included, so you have REST APIs for creating um, new environments, loading data models, loading test data, running your tests and getting the results back all through REST APIs. You can automate this kind of process because there are REST APIs as well for deployment, comparing data models or rollbacks. Code versioning is happening in a Git server. You can use Bitbucket or any other Git platform like GitHub. Operations is included, so it comes with a scheduler. It's creating automatically master jobs. It's logging everything. It's parallelizing everything. But if you have already external enterprise scheduler, that's fine. You can trigger it through REST APIs. If you want to achieve high availability, we can show you how to do that. And this is what the Data Vault Builder covers. Even most people only see usually this part because everything else is then happening in the background. So let's switch now to the Data Vault Builder running on Google BigQuery. And the question is, what is different to all the, all the other editions? On the surface, nothing. It's still a browser-based application. It has the still elements. It has the same elements. It has the same functionality. We can create our elements here, adding new hubs, maybe to add buses to our data model in a flight subject area. And the difference is it's now talking in the background directly with your big query database. So here, the usage is still the same. The functionality is still the same. We can preview the data exactly the same way as before. But in the background, instead of querying a Postgres database or Snowflake here, we're talking directly to BigQuery. So I've just created a new table. We can go here directly into our Cloud Console. Let's refresh my view here. It's now refreshed my whole web page. And we see the element directly in the database. So it knows which kind of data types it should use which kind of indexing is necessary or not, depending on the database. And we can look at the details, how it was created. We can preview it and there's no data yet because we just created the table that will hold the data later. So this is exactly the same as on the other the platforms. What we have here is that you see how it's organized. So we have here at the uh, top, something that's representing what would be the database and other systems. And here we have the things that would represent a schema, but we're organizing it with means that BigQuery provides and still always working in real time. So we could go to staging, we can stage your data. We have a lot of built-in connectors that you can use, but as well in the list of connectors, we have something called the intra database loader. And here I could access other big query databases where we can load the data from. And from here, when the data is staged, we can take it to the data viewer and have a short look on the data that we staged. Maybe let's group it here by carrier code. 
Let's then maybe do a tree map. And I have here loaded only a small sample of one specific airline. Then we can switch over to the data vault area. And here we can now map the data coming from the source to our data model. So let's look at an example. If we want to load like the airline, just select here our master data. Here in the background, it goes to the database. It selects now the business key, validates that it is unique. And if this is given, we can create this kind of load, create a satellite and everything directly. And we have now a new production ready state. So this means now the tool goes back to the staging table. It extends it to include the business key and hash key pre-calculation. It changes the ETL flow, loading this data into staging. It creates the load into the hub. It creates a satellite table. It creates a satellite load. And a few seconds later, we should see here the results. And that's what we see now. And we can directly load this kind of hub load. As all the implementation is done, the master job was updated and it's ready to receive this new data. Let's do that. And in the background, it triggers and load directly from the staging table into this target table. The data doesn't leave now BigQuery. It's just processed directly at the database. We are adding the logging and everything to it. This means that a few seconds later, we can now preview then the results here. And the same is true for the satellite. We can just start loading the satellite, but I'm not doing it here. I show you just that in the background, there was an operations job created that automatically will load all this information. So it would go here, stage the data, load it directly into the different objects. I could trigger parts here, like starting one single load, but I could start as well the full load and it would load everything in the right order. In parallel, data lineage was updated, so we can now filter for what we have changed. And we see that we have the source system, we have different staging tables, we have hub, satellites, we have not created any point in time tables yet. We have some output interface already that I've created before. And we have here a business rule section that I didn't use. And this is going then maybe to the output, but I didn't publish that. So that would be the next layer here that we can create here interface. And while creating here, my interface, I can select from the whole model, select columns, and it will create all the necessary queries. And this is really important because First thing, in Data Vault, we have a lot of tables that we need to join together. If you join it the wrong way, you have bugs in your code, you need to, need to follow up on that maybe for hours. And here really from the model, we can select and not only how to join stuff together, but if creating a new interface, we can select if you wanna have a temporal output, including the history with load time and load time end, or if we wanna just create as of now history in the second case of temporal output that will create the pit tables, load for the pit tables, will create that everything as well in the operation section. Now we can go to the business rule section and here we can add some business rules that we want to have and see directly the output. And this will be probably empty because I didn't load this table yet, but we can check on that in a second. Could go back here, load as well this kind of satellite And if we return now to the business rule, we could maybe here add something like a limit of 10 rows, maybe three rows or something like that, just to see that it affects the preview directly. And if you're happy with the result, we can publish it into the access layer and from that time on now, your clients can access, if they have access to this specific system, this kind of interface. So we can go now here to the data viewer and let's have a look at the new interface we have created. And we will see now exactly these three airlines. 
And this is now production ready. So we can go to the documentation, generate the documentation. So it accesses now really the database. It checks what is there, not what should be there. And here we see now down to the column level, what is in our database, what are the relations between the object. And it goes down through all the layers down to the business rules that I added in here. Let's go to the deployment section and now we could decide to deploy to a Git repository, to another live system, export it into files to use our custom Git client. But this here is supporting simplified deployment by comparing this kind of data models between environments, like if you have development test production, or it supports as well the Git flow based process with merging and branching of data. So you can have distributed development, many different developers can work on their own instance, and then merge together the changes they have done together that can be then deployed automatically using our CICD interfaces to the integrated development environment. This was a very short introduction to the new BigQuery based version of the Data Vault Builder. We are right now already installing it with the first clients.